Precious Soul TV. What up, what up? Welcome back to the Mushroom Sauce TV show. I'm your host, Sauce B. And today, it's been a long time coming, but we're gonna be talking about harvesting. I'm so excited, I hope you are too. Now, harvest, by definition, means the time of year when crops are ripe and ready to be gathered. So essentially, we get to eat the fruits of our labor. And after you harvest it, you have the choice of dehydrating it, store it, or cook with it. So today, I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know in order to have a successful harvest. But before we continue, don't forget to pound the subscribe, like, and notification bell. That way you can get all the hottest new content from your boy. So now that we're back, let's begin to talk about the two main components of harvesting, which is when to harvest and how to harvest. Now, I wanna start with the most important part, which is the when to harvest, primarily because there's so many different species of mushrooms that it can differ from species to species. For example, lion's mane look far different from portobello's. But I'm curious, what are some of your favorite mushrooms that are out there? Let me know in the comment section. All right, it's time to get down to business. So I thought it would be a good idea to draw a diagram, even though I'm not a good artist, of how and when to harvest. So you see the first four pins to the left? That is too early. So leave it there for a few more days so it can fully develop. Now the ones that are in the middle is perfect. The veil has broken and is now ready to sporulate. Now the one at the end is way too late, but still edible. Now lastly, the how to harvest is pretty simple. You would either twist and pull at the bottom at the base or cut it at the base. So now we're back at the grow tent and we're three days prior to harvest. And look at these guys. Last time you seen us, they were little pins. Now it look like they are going through puberty. <laughs> but now look at them. Look how big they are getting so fast. Man, I'm still tripping out to the fact that I'm growing mushrooms. But anyway, enough of all that. <laughs> so as a quick refresher, I have two trays that I went spawn the bulk in. I have two bags that I went spawn the bulk in, but they all were at different times. I have my humidifier set at about 90 to 95% humidity with my temperature set at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm doing, I'm actually setting the perfect temperature and ideal environment for fruiting to actually happen. So yeah. Also, if you've been watching my previous videos, you'll notice that I made a change in terms of my humidifier. This is a new humidifier that I purchased through Midwest Grow Kits. And this humidifier is actually called a monsoon humidifier. It is great for any greenhouse or large fruiting chambers, even a small one such as this. And the cool thing about the monsoon humidifier is that it can also be used with any standard household timer to add the supplemental humidity only when you need it. So when life happens and you got a lot of things going on, you're working a nine to five, you may not have the time to continue to turn it off and turn it on as you need it. And because I'm so busy all the time, I just thought it would be best to upgrade and buy one that is automatic. In addition to buying the humidifier, I also bought a digital humidity controller, which makes my life easier. You can purchase all of these things and get 10% off on all their products with Midwest Grow Kits. And all you have to do is just click the affiliate link that is below in the description. In addition to that, what I was able to do is give you guys a discount code, which gives you the 10% off, which is Mushroom Sauce TV. Use the code Mushroom Sauce TV to get 10% of all your products for a limited time only. And now for the moment we all have been waiting for, the harvest. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now in my Joe Biden voice, here's the deal. I may be acting cool right now, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm super geeked. And here's why I'm super geeked. I've been very patient throughout this whole process, even though that's kind of hard for me, because believe me when I tell you, there were times where I almost gave up on this process. I follow step by step of what the people who taught me how to do this did. I've been extra clean about everything. And most of all, I did not experience 
any type of contamination in this whole process. So before I continue, let me just give a quick shout out to the Rookie Mycologist, Philly Golden Teacher, Willie Myco, 92nd Mycology, and Southwest Mushrooms because they're the ones that gave me the confidence to go ahead and start growing on my own. Now with all that being said, let's take a moment to just look at my mushrooms and appreciate how well they turned out. Look at the caps and how they opened up perfectly. This is where I was telling you during that diagram that I was showing you of when is the best time to harvest. Now is time. Look how I'm actually going to the bottom of the base and twisting and then pulling. I just want to also show you the gills. The gills are used by mushrooms as a means of spore dispersal. And the cool thing about the spore dispersal, every single mushroom you see there can launch about 31,000 ballistospores per second, which adds up to about 2.7 billion spores per day. Yeah, that's a lot. And that's essentially what we use to inject our grains to make grain spawn. And we use it to make our liquid culture. And as I'm harvesting, I couldn't help but notice like this one that I just pulled out, how the, the mushrooms are growing together in one spot, kind of like your homeboys in, from the neighborhood, loyal to the very end. <laughs> but I'm now continuing to just twist and pull, twist and pull, um, and just putting it into the strainer. So that later on i can go ahead and cut the bottom of the mushroom where the substrate is still there so that it makes for a cleaner and more edible product now that i'm all done with harvesting the tray now i'm going to start to harvest the bag and as I begin to harvest the bag, I couldn't help but notice that these mushrooms are much bigger than the ones that were in the trays. And if you look closely, it's not as well developed as the ones in the trays. So it has a little bit more time to grow, but I just figured I'd just go ahead and harvest it for the sake of the video so that you guys can see and draw a comparison to both of them. Now remember from the previous videos, I said that this was a five pound bag of substrate that I mixed with the grains look how much they turned out whereas the trays was a one to three ratio which is one pound grain spawn and three pound substrate so the conclusion in which I've drawn is that because I have more substrate in the bag it gave it more nutrients so that the mushroom can grow much larger that's what makes sense to me think about any living organism if they don't get enough nutrients what happens to them they don't grow they become weak and eventually they would die of malnutrition. But hey, I could be wrong. So if there's any expert mycologist watching this video, please, by all means, put a comment below letting me know if I'm on the right track, if I drew the right conclusion or am I completely off base? I'd appreciate that, thanks. So as I'm continuing to harvest this bag, one of the things you probably notice is that the rubber bands are not on the bags anymore. Well, I did this on purpose. The reason why is because I wanted to see what exactly happened if I removed the rubber bands. And as you can see, there has been growth from the side, which is called side pinning. So for me, this confirms that rubber bands are a necessity for mushroom cultivation in a bag, especially when you have a mushroom species that you prefer to grow upwards. Now, when you are growing lion's mane, king oyster, pink oyster, any of the oyster families, as well as like shiitake, you want to have it fruit from the side. And I learned this from just watching videos on YouTube. Whew, now that I'm done, now I can go ahead and weigh how much I've harvested on my first flush. In retrospect, what I should have done was weigh what I had in the bag and then weigh what I had in the trays to compare the two and see which one was better. But in all actuality, I believe that the, the bags were probably more than the tray. But look at this. This is grams, ladies and gentlemen. My first flush altogether was 590 grams of mushrooms. And if you convert that to ounces, that is almost 21 ounces, which is 1.3 pounds. Holy sh! that is amazing to be able to grow mushrooms all from a closet space is absolutely amazing and i'm telling you if i can do it you can do it trust me you don't have to be a mad scientist you don't have to be the smartest person in the world all you have to have is determination and the willpower to want to see things through kind of like a marathon runner 
You gotta run through the tape, baby. Listen, I'm not trying to be a preacher, but there's a lot of life lessons that I've learned through this growth process, which I'm sure I will learn even more as I continue to cultivate mushrooms. All right, let me get off my soapbox and let me continue on with the video. As you can see, what I'm doing right now, I'm cutting off the ends of the mushrooms where it's covered in substrate. And also, there's been a lot of debate on whether or not you should clean your mushroom using water or should you just wipe it down with like a clean cloth or paper towel. I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna wash mine. So don't judge me, judge your mama. <laughs> it's taking too long, let's speed this thing up. All right, we're done. So now it's time to go ahead and wash it for consumption. But in the meantime, I'm gonna recap the growth process. My timeline for growing with mushrooms was grains inoculations to full colonization was 21 to 28 days. Then spawn to bulk substrate colonization was 14 to 21 days. Then pinning siting was seven to 14 days and harvesting was about seven to 10 days later. So the total number of days from spore to flush was about 49 to 73 days, depending on the growth method. So I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. So until then, peace. I love y'all.